I mean, a lot uh, of new things uh, are happening, and uh, I mean, Geneva Motor Show is uh, a unique uh, place uh, to see what the manufacturers are uh, preparing. So uh, clearly, uh, we need to concentrate on uh, autonomous car, on the future, on a connected uh, car, but we also need uh, to make sure that other uh, safety measures like uh, electronic stability uh, control are implemented on all the cars on different markets all around the world because they will have immediate uh, effect on those terrible uh, fig uh, figures. I want to remind that every year 1.3 million people die on the roads, that 50 million people are hurt on the roads, it's the number one cause of mortality for youth between 14 to 29. So I think it would be a mistake only to concentrate and to think, okay, let's uh, uh, hope we will soon have uh, autonomous car, connected uh, cars, and uh, I mean, crashes will stop. Because uh, unfortunately, 90% of the figures I was mentioning are happening in developing countries and they will not have access to connected and uh, autonomous car. Uh, I feel uh, connectivity uh, could also be essential to improve uh, congestions and uh, uh, this worrying which is a concern for every citizen around the world every day which is traffic. You know, so um, I think we have some immediate uh, opportunities which need to address in, uh, in cities. We could have a significant effect. Also uh, improving uh, pollution. You know, we are talking a lot about uh, climate change, about uh, pollution. So there are a lot of uh, fascinating programs which uh, are going to be put uh, in place where we need to put uh, very strong teams working uh, together to to achieve uh, to achieve those, those uh, significant uh, results I mean I would say time you know, it takes, uh, it takes time and it's, uh, sometimes it's uh, a big difference between when innovation which can be, uh, which can be shown and then uh, to application, application to all, uh, all the cars and uh, we're talking again about uh, connectivity, about autonomous uh, cars, but uh, we also need to think about uh, road infrastructures. So it's a, it's a big uh, program which needs uh, to be addressed, which is very important. It will be addressed, it will happen in the next decade, but we also need to concentrate on the today problems, and they are huge. I mean, what the developing world uh, is uh, facing, I mean, is uh, a lack of education, a lack of uh, law enforcement, unfortunately, often due to corruption, uh, poor vehicles, because uh, you know what is happening. I mean, the nice car you see uh, in the developed uh, countries after seven or eight years, they are forbidden in the country. So what happens? They go in developing countries. And uh, then road infrastructures, which uh, unfortunately uh, are very poor. And uh, last but uh, not least, uh, the level of medical uh, crash. You know, once a crash is uh, occurring, it is essential that uh, there is a quick recovery and it does happen. And uh, again, I want to go back on uh, law enforcement, simple things like buckling the safety belt having a proper helmet, not speeding, not drink driving, not text driving, will allow to achieve the 3.6 sustainable development target to half the number of victims by 2020. So we must focus on the reality of every day around the world and also work 
on fascinating technologies for the future. The future. No, I mean it's an interesting uh, question. Motorsport has to be a show, but has and is also a laboratory. So we need to learn from. Uh, we need to enjoy motorsport for all the passionate, but also we need to use motorsport to progress quicker. And it's happening. You know, it's happening on data, on uh, con connection, on um, not so much on autom autonomous because then it will be again the spirit uh, of the sport. But uh, on safety standards, it's a lot coming from motorsport and it's something we need to intensify.